So welcome everyone to this incredibly exciting event called Our Homes Are On Fire from Australia to the Middle East. And before we start, I would just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which at least I am coming into this Zoom call from, the Gadigal and Dara clan of the Eora Nation here in Sydney. I want to pay my respects to elders past and present and extend that respect to any First Nations people who may be on this call tonight and recognize that sovereignty was never ceded. If everyone as like a little short intro just wants to pop into the chat their name and if they know it, the name of the traditional land that they are calling in from if you're coming from Australia. So we can get a sense of who's here and where you're all coming from. That would be great while I just kind of do some of the more admin stuff. So, you know, like I said, tonight is a really special and exciting event. We are joined by four really amazing um, climate activists that are coming to us from four different places in Australia, Israel, Palestine, and Jordan. And I'll come and back to that and introduce them in a minute. I want to um, give a huge thank you to EcoPeace, um, who've partnered with us for this event and who've been really crucial and critical in helping develop some of the content um, and three of the panelists who three from the Middle East are all part of their um, youth program. So what does the next hour have in store? What does this event look like? We're going to hear from the four panelists um, for about 30 to 35 minutes. Um, and then we're going to move into a short breakout room discussion for about 10, 15 minutes at the end where you'll have space to reflect on kind of what you heard and we have some amazing facilitators who are going to be guiding those um, conversations and then we'll sort of all come back together in the main room at the end to close the meeting. I also just want to flag that this event is being recorded so that we can upload it onto our YouTube channel which is public um, and send it to people who are unable to attend tonight. However, the breakout room section of the event isn't going to be recorded. Um, so feel free to speak freely. Don't be stressed about, um, you know, whatever you share in your breakout room being then put on the internet. That's, we're not gonna upload that. Just quickly general Zoom etiquette, which I think everyone should be around. Keep yourself on mute when you're not um, speaking. Um, We'll also, like, I encourage you to turn your camera on if you haven't already so we can see everyone. And um, also throughout the conversation, if you kind of have any thoughts or like questions for like the discussion, feel free to pop them in the chat. And if we have time and if we're able to, then maybe we'll address them or incorporate them into um, our discussion, but we'll kind of see. So now to introduce the three organizations that are here tonight, part of this event. First of all, um, we have the New Israel Fund, which I think you're all familiar with, but just in case anyone isn't, we are a partnership of Israelis and supporters, supporters of Israel worldwide who are dedicated to a vision of Israel as both a Jewish homeland and a democracy for all of its citizens. We promote freedom, equality, and social justice in Israel by funding Israeli nonprofits and fostering new discussions like this one, in the Australian Jewish community. I'm now going to hand over to Nawa, who's going to introduce EcoPeace, and then Ella is going to introduce the School Strike for Climate. Hello, everyone. Uh, firstly, we want to thank you, actually, for giving us this uh, opportunity to connect Australia with the Middle East. Uh, I want also to welcome my counterparts who are present here today. We have uh, Sigal from the Tel Aviv office, and we have Lisa also from the Tel Aviv office. Uh, Mahmoud has uh, shut down his camera, but he's uh, from the uh, Ramallah office. Uh, my name is Nawar, and I'm managing the educational programs at EcoPeace Middle East in Amman, in Jordan. And um, the organization was established uh, back in 1994, right after the peace treaty between Jordan and Israel. 
uh, the idea of our existence is to promote cooperative uh, efforts in order to protect the uh, region's shared environmental uh, heritage and the uh, shared uh, water resources and the environmental resources that are available. And we are considered a unique organization in our region, and maybe maybe it's uh, it's on a worldwide level because we're the only organization that brings actually uh, Palestinians, Jordanians, and Israelis to discuss environmental issues and try to uh, find solutions together. Uh, in order to promote our vision, uh, we combine a bottom-up and uh, a top-down approach. So basically, the bottom-up is the grassroots or uh, the, the, the approach that involves education, awareness raising, uh, outreach, and uh, that results in uh, trust building at a communal level. Uh, whereas the uh, top-down um, uh, approach is uh, more of uh, as sharing scientific papers uh, as uh, tools for advocacy and so on. And it's, it's considered the, the short-term vision of, uh, of, the, uh, of the organization. And we are gathered here today uh, to talk about the bottom-up approach that we implement as part of the Good Water Neighbors program, uh, which is the flagship uh, program of EcoPeace that was launched back in 2001. And we are now in the fourth phase of that, uh, of that uh, program, and it started in 2018. Um, we believe that, or it, it's not that we believe, it's, it's, uh, it's a scientific uh, saying that says that uh, human nature tends to focus on, uh, on problems when we lack education, when we lack the power of knowledge. So what we do as, uh, as an organization is that we, we empower youth aged between 15 to 17 and their teachers, and we also build the capacities of young professionals uh, aged between uh, 21 to 35 in order to open their eyes to the consequences that we are going to confront if we do not work together and if we do not collaborate in order to uh, find sustainable solutions to the current environmental problems while focusing on the uh, water realities in our region. And that's basically what we do. Like this is the, the, the sum up of, uh, of the uh, more than 20 years of working in the region in five minutes. So I now hand it back to you, Eve. Thanks, I'll just hand it over to Ella. Um, hi, I'm Ella and I'm on um, Wurundjeri land here in so-called Melbourne and I'm kind of representing School Strike for Climate, which is the Australian like Fridays for Future. Um, and so I've been part of School Strike for about three years now and it's been a very long journey and I'm, I was 12 when I started, so it's very exciting to see how from a young age you can go on to a lot bigger things. Um, and I guess School Strike is like the largest youth climate action group in Australia. Um, and we have like three demands, but these pretty much cover across like getting government to create publicly owned um, renewable energy and setting um, urgent targets to like continue to reach our Paris Agreement obligations um, and what we need to happen. And so, yeah, I like work on campaigns with School Strike and other campaigns with the Australian Youth Climate Coalition, another youth run organization. Um, and also many things within the Jewish community and like my Jewish primary school helping get solar panels on our schools and within Jewish youth groups, educating and empowering um, younger kids. Cool. Thanks, Ella and Noah. So I'll quickly introduce each panelist and they'll give a little wave as I say their names. Um, so as we've just heard, we've got um, Ella Simons from Melbourne in Australia. We have Suad Semi from Atas Village in the West Bank. We have Daad um, Tamimi from Amman in Jordan. And we have Michael Buckland from Israel. And I'm not actually sure what part of Israel you're from, Michael, but you can mention that when we move on to you. Um, so now we're kind of um, just for all four of you, how did you get involved in the organisation that you're part of um, and sort of what is your role now, like what is your contribution to the organisation that would you like to kick us off? Hi everyone, um, my name is Dahid. Um, I've been involved and like environmental issues ever since I was a little girl because my mom like uh, my mom is uh, involved in env environmental issues too and she kind of raised me to um, speak up especially in, our, in my community and in my school and she is she's been involved with EcoPeace like 
since a long like and then <laughs> sorry since a long time so um i kind of i was always loosely involved with them but after like um a certain amount of time so maybe like two years ago i became more involved so i started joining their youth programs and i became a speaker um with them so um probably like two years ago and it really empowered me and helped me see you know different perspectives from all sides so yeah i guess that's it thank you thanks michael what about you um i've been involved since i was 14. um i became involved because um well i saw a lot of plastic around me and then i did some basic social media internet research as a child would do. Um, and, you know, that primal concern that probably every one of us share here in, the, in this group, um, that kind of hit me. Um, and then I started to act more, um, find new mediums to help, um, do basically everything that I can. Um, and that led me to echo piece and, uh, you know, I, I relate to that in that uh, I found very different dimensions to look at um, different problems problems as well um, through FLPs. And um, it has given me a lot of uh, food for thought, I, I would say. Thank you. Suaj? Yeah. Um, I joined the EcoBees Youth Program last year through my parents. They've been uh, involved with the Ecobis teachers uh, program and they encouraged me to join uh, the youth workshops uh, because they trust that this is the best place to learn more about the environment and uh, to, uh, for me uh, to build my uh, personal, personal skills and uh, to become active youth. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And Ella, what about you? Um, yeah, so I, when I first joined School Strike, I helped organize the major like um, rally, which we had 200,000 people here in Melbourne, which was pretty incredible and like exhilarating to be part of. Um, and I guess things have changed a lot since lockdown, but I'm currently helping organize up and coming like for the next strikes um, and also upskilling many students that have joined since lockdown who haven't had any experience organizing in person. Um, and I think like I've always cared so, so much. And it was definitely around our um, federal elections here in Australia that was like, we're gonna elect people that couldn't care less. They don't go to the conferences they're supposed to go to. They don't sign the things they need to sign. They just don't do anything. And so I don't have, I'm not allowed to vote yet and so I had to use all the power I have to convince the people that can vote to vote in a way that's going to protect my future and everyone else's and so I helped a lot around like campaigning around the election creating like a climate election saying we need you guys to vote on the basis of climate policies and what the government's going to choose to do in the next four years um, and unfortunately that election didn't go as I think many Australians hoped and many school strike organizers hoped. And so like straight after that, it was just continuously campaigning for our parties to change their policies because they have not reached any targets set. Um, and so I guess it's currently just working towards goals of like becoming 100% renewable by 2030 um, and helping go reach out to communities in the fossil fuel industry and also frontline um, and First Nations communities that are suffering the most from the climate effects currently in Australia um, and helping these people transition over to like renewable energy jobs and also educating people on like voting um, and on just like climate science pretty much. And so working on all those different things. Yeah. Thank you. It sounds like you all do a lot. Um, and it's amazing to hear how you all like find the organizations that you're working with a really empowering way to as young people to advocate for the things you care about and to make connections with new people and look at things from a different different lens. 
and also interesting to see how all your like for some of you your parents have been part of that um, pushing you in that direction and encouraging you to take action which is really lovely to hear um so you know often like everyone kind of on this call comes from maybe what people might refer to as like smaller countries or less important countries when it comes to comes to global climate action and when they talk, talk about the amount of emissions in the world people will say we should just be waiting on countries like china or the us to um take action and then you will see like countries like ours will follow suit and then you can also sort of hear people talking about um how you know i'm just one person how is that going to make a difference like whatever i do in my life how do I know that's going to contribute what's needed? And this issue of tackling climate feels so overwhelming um, that we can feel quite alone. And especially when we're young, sort of knowing what to do about it um, can feel difficult and you don't know where to begin. So I'm very curious to hear from each of you what your attitude to that question is and how can you, do you see yourself um, being part of creating a wave of change in the work that you're doing? We'll just go in the same speaking order as before. Okay, so should I start? Okay, so um, first off, I believe, um, as Nelson Mandela said, it, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So I believe the first step what we can do is educate ourselves. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to do something monumental or huge in order for you to make a difference. And if you've ever heard of uh, the butterfly effect, it can be interpreted in a lot of different ways, but what it basically explains is the flutter of a single butterfly can um, cause a typhoon on the other half of the world. Um, it can change the course of the universe forever, basically. And the same goes for us as people, as individuals, because no matter how small your action might be, it might, lead, it, it might be an agent for change. You might build the foundation for something better. It, for something better, for something you can better yourself with, for something you can better your country with, your uh, friends with. So yeah, that's basically it. Thanks, Michael. What about you? What do you think about that? Well, in terms of how to, there's two different questions here. One is about the response of the government. So my actions don't matter, right? Because I, I don't have that much emissions. And then the other question is, how to create the change. And the first one, in, in terms of what the politician said, I think it's a very simple, a, a very simplified answer. Um, climate change is such, such a complex problem, and it doesn't only require mitigating climate change emissions, it also requires innovating new solutions to different adaptational problems. Um, live, currently, we're on, on a track of going, in the best case scenario, for a um, two degrees um, world, which is going to have a lot of different effects on people and the climate. Um, so we're going to need a lot of adaptational problems. Uh, 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 just in a two degrees world, it's going to cost the world on an annual basis around $100 million um, just to adapt to it. Uh, so we're going to have, have to create a lot of solutions that are going to help people. And everyone, every country, regardless of how much they emit can help in innovating those solutions. Um, now, in terms of how to create a wave of change, I completely agree with Dad. Um, the unfortunate and good thing about climate change is that it is real. And uh, because of it, the truth is on our side and not on the side of the um, climate deni uh, denialists. Um, so the only thing that we really need to do is to spread the information and that way it, the problem will speak for itself and the faster we do that, the faster we get results. Thanks, Michael. So uh, what about you? What's your take on it? So uh, are you still with us? Yes, yes, but, but there, there's, I, I'm here, but there's a problem with microphone. So um, environment education become among my top priorities. I have shared my 
my EcoBees environmental experience with, with many of my friends in school and my community. And um, I, I'm always planning to conduct environment awareness campa campaigns to sp uh, spread this awareness among uh, other youth. And even my uh, teachers, because I always believe that to change my environment to better, it's our own responsibility to change our behavior towards it. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Ella, what do you think? What do you kind of tell people in response to this attitudes? Yeah, I think when I when people say things that like, oh, we're waiting on this country or nothing's going to happen if Australia, if the US doesn't do it, if China doesn't do it, it just shows that like they don't have any hope at all and that they're relying on other people to make this change and to take this action. And I think it's really important that when there's like a whole wide movement, just how our society works is every single person has a role in our society and your life plays out because everyone, you go to the shops and there's someone that works at the shops and how you get your food and everything. There's always people behind it and there's always people that you then give to. And so I think it's really key to look up and see that like, we all are contributing and we all need to take action together and we all take different types of action. And it's really important that say, if here in Australia where I have a voice that like, when I am able to vote, my vote is really important. And I know that my vote makes a big difference that I use that to vote and that I use my friends and my family and everyone around me that I can talk to and have these conversations about to get them to vote. And so it's about using your community and the resources you have and however much time you have to do what you can and to really show that like whatever role you play, we're not waiting for anybody else. We can't wait for them. This is an urgent issue and action needs to be taken like right now as soon as we can. Yeah. Thank you everyone for sharing your thoughts on that. So I'd, I'm really interested to hear about some of the um, challenges that you've had in like working with EcoPeace or things you've different, um, you've had to overcome because this is really great work, but it's not easy all the time. And sometimes like, how do you kind of keep going? Yeah. Actually, I, I, I have, not, not the, a lot of problems with the, with the organization and uh, join me with it. But uh, the world peace has become a complication for the Palestinian people because of the crimes uh, uh, committed by the occupation uh, authorities under the so, uh, so, uh, soldier to, uh, to, of peace, such as uh, stalemates and uh, uh, plundering uh, lands. Uh, that's it, Danny, with my community. Right. Um, and so how is that kind of tied into some of the work that you do with EcoPeace, do you think? I think by uh, changing the mind of, uh, of the youth, youth, uh, youth people, uh, by uh, sharing uh, our awareness in, uh, in, uh, in occupation, in uh, organization, uh, with uh, our friends in uh, schools and community to uh, to see our, uh, to see our uh, people that uh, in uh, the the beast is uh, to to uh, to our own uh, um, keep important thing yeah. Right. yeah thank you thank you for sharing um Ella I might hand it back to you yes. to talk about some of the inspiring moments you've had, I mean, you're what, 14 now? You've already helped organize like a national strike um, and you've been around for two, three years in the movement. So what, what's been some really powerful moments for you in the work you've done? I think, also sorry about the notifications. <laughs> um, I think that like moments at strikes, like on September 20, when we had that many people at a strike, it was incredible to see how like, 12 teenagers under the age of like 16 could bring together 200,000 students that maybe didn't care before, but now they do care and they've taken the time to come and do something. And so it's really the moments like 
straight after an event or something when I can talk to organizers and be like, how the hell did we do that? Or like, like whether there were a large amount of people or whether you had just like one incredible conversation with somebody that you feel made a difference. Even after the election, which didn't go as planned, I had had so many incredible conversations that it was just like to be proud that you had talked to people and had a genuine conversation teaching someone and learning from them as well. Um, I found really incredible. Well, thank you. And it's great. I'm sure all those moments add up and when things are a bit more difficult, you can hold on to those to kind of keep going and keep doing the work. Um, Da'ad, I know that you've sort of done a lot of work, not like with the things you've done in Eco Peace, which is, you know, working across different regions, you've tried to bring some of that to your school and to your community. And I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about what sort of that has been like on the more local level with some of the work you've done in Jordan. Um, so I've been working on a lot of recent projects with um, my classmates in my school um, in order to like collaborate, especially since my, like, my school is considered uh, more upper class than usually um, the people we work with. So because they're not affected by, you know, environmental issues as much as people in poorer regions in Jordan and in Palestine. So I've been trying to um, work with them to raise awareness and bring, uh, you know, be, uh, bring their resources over. So one of the examples I've been working on recently is uh, a project I called the Dots of Hope, which is basically uh, drops are dots of hope. And I've been working with my school. So collaboratively, we've been raising money through a bake sale. So basically, we would hold a bake, bake sale in school and we would raise money. And what we would do is we would go to the Jordan Valley and we would build something called the gray water system, which is where basically they recycle water um, that we use in baths and, and uh, you know, the household system and we use it for irrigation again. So what we've been doing is we've created a social media account. We've been trying to campaign for it um, and we've raised like quite a substantial amount of money and we were in the process of um, implementing it. And we uh, we went and we saw where we're gonna implement it. So we went down to the Jordan Valley. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of hard right now because of all the COVID restrictions and everything. So we've, we've been hope hoping like after a bit, we can uh, resume it. But I've seen like great results with it because it also educates people who might've not been aware that we have environmental issues, that we are one of the poorest countries in the world when it comes to water, when it comes to um, environment, our environment and how we should conserve it. So I think it's really important and it's been a really great experience for everyone. Yeah, and, and, and when then I, I think when I want to add something, I can. Uh, I, I see that uh, when, uh, when the new generation and youth get to know how climate change might affect our limited water and natural uh, resources, this can help to encourage everyone to work together and uh, celebrate before it, it is too late. The climate change might be our uh, greatest uh, threat, a threat of uh, to our uh, shared and limited water and natural resources. We are working with other uh, youth to spread this awareness. Thank you. Thanks, Suad. Yeah, and I feel like that's really one of the amazing things that comes out of Eco Peace is this understanding that resources like water is a shared resource in the region and it's important to everyone. And like, like Michael was saying before, um, we're all gonna be impacted by climate change. It's coming, um, Slash is here, and we need to be doing things to kind of prepare for that and working collectively is a really amazing way to, um, to, to start getting there. So thank you both for sharing those thoughts and those stories. Um, Michael, I was actually wondering if I could hand over you to talk about that a bit more about what it's like, you know, your thoughts on like water as a shared resource and um, some of the work you've been doing, why is it so important to deal with now? Um, sure. So 
last year, uh, we had a meeting um, in Israel with our Echo PC trustees. Um, and we had a tour, a water tour, where we visited different places. Uh, one of them was the um, Yad Hana uh, Wastewater Treatment Center. And that was kind of moment, a pivotal moment for me where um, I learned more about water scarcity because you know you, you could you could see it. Um, the waste wastewater management plant is extremely dysfunctional due to lack of funding. Um, and it could do much better if the governments would be able to negotiate. So it's not only about um, conserving water, but there is the element of diplomacy, which is very, very important, um, and communication. Um, in terms of my work, um, I've, or I've, like um, Ella, um, I've been active in Friday for Future Israel. I was one of the people who founded the movement, yeah. Um, and um, we we organized lots of strikes um, and had the helped organize the biggest climate strike in Israel's history as well. Um, and then personally, I took also um, action in I, I initiated a climate conference where uh, with Echo Peace support where I invited um, and every like per, people from every single region in, in Israel and from different um, sectors. Um, so it, it was a very large sort of youth conference, very representative. We had politicians, ambassadors, climate scientists, NGO representatives, um, you name it, we had it. And um, then we came with sort of a policy suggestion to the government of Israel, which we presented in front of politicians. And it was a very positive um, and empowering experience. Thank you. That sounds really incredible. And a lot of what um, Noah was talking about in terms of having that grassroots and top down approach and how do you kind of bring, I feel like you brought both of those things into the same room together, which is so important. Um, for our final question, I just kind of keeping going on this theme of like collabor collaboration and working together. Um, Ella, I was wondering if you can kind of reflect, I think with EcoBees, it's very obvious what the like collaboration element is. There's three different regions working together. Um, in your work with Schools Strike for Climate, what have been some of the, um, you know, things that you've tried to reach out and collaborate with different groups? What is some of the diversity within the movement that you've had to kind of work with and deal with? If you could just speak to that. Um, yeah. Great. So, um, obviously in Australia and especially within like the climate movement, um, talking about like the effect that colonization has had on climate change and like how we involve First Nations people who know how to care for land the best out of everyone, how we involve them in the climate movement um, is really important. And I think it also takes a lot of effort to bring those people in because they have less resources and it's a lot harder to do such a thing. And so we tend to like reach out to First Nations communities so that at strikes and events, we can hear from these people and like give them an opportunity to speak, um, uh, to learn about like land practice and whatnot. And I think it also for me really like is special between talking about like the First Nations and Jewish communities here in Australia um, and across the world. But like it always connects to me that First Nations communities and Jewish communities have always had a really good relationship here and to continue passing that on um, and continue having those conversations. And I think School Strike also like prides themselves on working with unions across the country and with faith communities um, and really diverse communities. And so for me, it's really important that we are continuing to reach out to these different communities. And like, um, from my perspective, going to a youth, Jewish youth group, I love like talking about this and getting my Jewish youth groups, getting like the Jewish youth groups together to make banners and to come to the next rallies. So we can really show that like these separate communities care. And when separate communities come together to create a bigger community, we can create much bigger things. And if it's also an issue that brings people together in solidarity and brings people together to show that we're all gonna be affected by one united issue, then we must like create peace with each other and restore relationships with each other. 
yeah, really, really important. And it is amazing to see when you go to um, like a school climate strike rally, all the banners and the different groups, and it's a very visual representation of all the different people coming together, which is amazing. Um, thank you so much for sharing everyone, your stories and your, I guess, thoughts and perspectives on this issue. We're gonna move into breakout rooms now for the next about 10, 15 minutes. We'll try and come back a little bit after 8.20 to the main room together. So the lovely Sharon Berger is going to move us into breakout rooms now and in there you'll have some time to just reflect, discuss your facilitators will be you through the process. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for contributing to discussions and um, to our facilitators for helping run those groups and sharing your thoughts. Um, so we're pretty much at the end of this event, but one last thing before you go. So we've heard a lot of amazing things from our panelists. We've had conversations about so many different topics. So what now? Do we end the Zoom call, go to bed and go, whoa, cool, that was I had such this interesting conversation um, about climate change and young people and now I'm going to carry on doing what I'm doing? Or do we take kind of the conversations we've had here tonight and the things that we've heard and try to like do something with that. Um, I hope you all go for the latter. And to help you with that, I've put together a handy little document, which I'm sending to the group ch chat now, called What to Do Next. So some of the things in that you can do are if you want to learn more about EcoPeace, um, there is, um, you can sign up for their newsletter. There's a link there. Um, or if you want to contact um, Sigal, who maybe if you can give a little wave, who's in the Tel Aviv office, to learn more about their work or if you want to connect to any of the panelists just email give her an email and she'll be able to hook you up um, if you want to support the school strike for climate movement in australia there's a list of um, their social medias to follow i'm not sure how you guys may have been impacted by the facebook band but anyway there's also a newsletter you can sign up for um, and then what are actions that you can take in your own life so um, and this kind of some of this came from a conversation I had with Ella is like, well, you can change your energy provider, you can switch to an ethical bank, you can switch superannuation funds, they're like some very practical things that you as an individual can do. And that can feel overwhelming where to begin. So there's some lovely resources on the internet, which I've included links for, of how you can go about doing that. If you want to learn more, um, you can read this great book by Rebecca Huntley called How to Talk About Climate Change in a Way That Makes a Difference. She's an Australian sociologist um, and this book came out last year. Um, so give that a read or even better, host a book club discussion about it. Get all your friends to read it um, and chat about what you think. Another great documentary you can watch if you want to learn more is the 2040 documentary, um, documentary slash film. Um, so watch it yourself, or again, even better, host a screening with your friends. Bring your family over for after Shabbat, watch the movie all together, discuss it, get people thinking, talk about the issues. Um, and last but not least, you can contact your local council, um, check out their website to see what your local council is doing about climate change, give them a call to ask them, um, and maybe there's some really exciting and cool projects happening in your local area that you can actually get involved in and support. So there's some really um, great things you can do. Um, you can come to the next NIF event to continue your constant expanding of knowledge um, and discussion and making connection and building community. That's what we're doing here with our new gen community is building a really beautiful community to have these types of conversations. So I hope to see you all again soon. Again, a massive, and I'll also be sending this all out in our follow-up email. So if you don't save it now, that's fine look out for your inbox and it will be there. A massive, massive thank you once again to our panelists, Ella, Da'ad, Michael, Suad. Thank you so much for taking the time, trying to coordinate between four different regions with different time zones. And also you're all in high school. So when are you not in school and when will Australian young adults come to an event? It was, it was a bit hoops to jump through, but we did it. Um, so thank you so much. A massive thanks to the staff um, at EcoPeace for also helping with those logistics and um, helping put this together. I think this was a really amazing night and you all helped make it happen. Thanks to our small group leaders for facilitating and thank you to everyone for coming. 
and contributing and just, again, being part of this great community. It's great to have you here. Bye, everyone. It was great. Bye, thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.